nationality, every religion, you have tradesmen, everybody out here has a talent, a skill, and all we want is equal rights, and we deserve those, because our forefathers fought for this country and fought for our rights. So what are you asking for? You're saying you, you, you're saying you, you have the right to sustain yourself, but then you're also asking for help. We can sustain ourselves, but yes, we need help because of our situation. Why don't we let them each have, make their statement first and then ask some questions? Sure, fine, how are you? My name is Hernando Turner. Uh, I'm with Safe Ground too, off and on. But like, uh, like she was saying, you know what I'm saying, we need a place to go. Uh, actually, we're being herded here. We got herd here, and now we gotta leave? There's no other place for us to go, period. You know, no place, you know. Uh, you, you, you go this way, you get run off, you know. Uh, you go that way, you get run off. This is the only place that we, we got left to go. Our back's against the fence, At, literally, you know. What are we supposed to do? We get, we, we, we can't, not unless they want to, we go up on the state capitol, we're going to get a federal fence or whatever it's called, you know, we're going to get something like that. We can't go camp over there and let them know, you know, we're homeless, okay? Only thing they got to do is let us have a little piece of land like this man is trying to do for us, let us have a little piece of land, you know what I'm saying? Let us build what we they want us to have, you know what I'm saying? And we'd be happy, you know? You know, keep a few months inside, you know, inside the place, you know what I'm saying? They give them a few months inside the place to stay, you know, to get themselves together, find a job and stuff, and then they off in the next group and come on in, you know? We're just trying to get off these streets, you know? Can you spell your name first of all? E-A-R, A-N-N-A-N-D-O, Turner, T-U-R-N-E-R. And we make peace with these warehouses. Yes. We have spoke you know, to these warehouses owners, owners, and they have our back. We have exchanged personal contact information with them. They call us if they have any issues. We go with them and we solve the issues, and we've only had two minor issues since we've been here. We keep the place clean. We're people too. People need to understand that. Yes. Stacy, did you have something to say? Hi, uh, my name is Stacy Selmans, S-T-A-C-Y-S-E-L-M-A-N-T-S. This is Jay. I, I promise him he might be on TV. Um, I'm here because I've been out here for, eight, for uh, basically nine months now. Um, I'm here because I was taking care of my mother, who had Alzheimer's, um, for five years. My brother, who had not spoken to either one of us for 25 years, showed up, became her conservator, put her in a boarding care home, which is actually where she should be. I was really to the point where I couldn't take care of her, and evicted me. When you don't work for five years, and you're 54, in this economy, you can't find a job. People say, why don't you go just go get a job? I can't find a job. I have a college degree in journalism. I have 30 years experience in lobbying, writing, uh, sales, marketing. I can't find a job. I would love to get a job, but I can't. So I'm here with these people who I've grown very fond of become my family because I have nowhere else to go. Stacy, yeah. Uh, my name is Jim Gibson. Um, I've been a part of the uh, Safe Ground ever since the start of day one. And it has progressed into probably two to three folds since it first started. There's people out here that were living in unity. We've been living in unity. This place is kept very clean. It's uh, quiet. Everybody gets along. All we need is a safe place to rest and be able to know that we have somewhere to go at night. Right now, this is the best that we can do. All the shelters, the overflows are full. They cannot handle the amount of people, the amount of homeless people that are on the street today. So this is our alternative. Um, there is nowhere left for us to go. Um, ever since I started this two and a half years ago, um, we have been herded every, every, every year at this same time when it starts to get cold when it starts to rain, when the holidays come around, they start hurting us into one area. Then once we get into one area, then they, they may disperse it completely again. So basically, the homeless here that are in St. Ground now have nowhere else to go. And this is the reason why we're trying to make a stand now and put the word out that if somebody has somewhere else that we can go, which is close enough for the facilities and the things that the homeless need, that would be fantastic. But until then, this is it. This is as far as we can go. Well, this is where we're going to be at. This is it. This is it. We're, we can't go anywhere. Don't think
John, do you have a few words? We have issues out here. There's homeless people living on this river. The Chinese have been trying to deny it for decades. This is clear by the last homeless count. They say there's 2,300 homeless in this county. The Department of Education, however, says there's 7,300 homeless children. They see those people every day. They don't do a one-night snapshot count. So we are not getting a clear and honest picture of what's going on. Now, we have tried to manage the situation at least. We've dealt with the four biggest problems as safe ground. And these people that are with us are also doing this in terms of garbage, in terms of sanitation, in terms of animals and drugs and alcohol. These things have been managed out here. And yet we seem to get attacked first. So it's really not about those things. It's about keeping out of sight and pretending the situation doesn't exist. They're finally starting to acknowledge that instead of doing something to help the people and solve this problem, they're bringing tons of police out. And they're attacking their own citizens. The amount they're going to wind up spending on police is going to exceed all the money they would spend on just finding a place for people to go. This is not a cost-effective way to deal with things. All it's going to do is make politicians look like they're doing something when they're really just making the situation worse. Once you let the people go from jail, where are they going to go? They don't have a place to go now. They're going to wind up with the same problem. Let me ask you something. There's a, the city and county just found the money to equal the amount of services provided last year, um, while the city has also increased the number of houses or uh, amount of housing for, for the homeless. Is there a disconnect between what the city is doing in that regard and what the police are doing? It, it, it sounds like one part of the city's trying to provide more housing while the other part of the city in the police department is, is here uh, trying to move you off out of, this, out of this area. Well, actually, you know, what, what has prompted this action is more tracks back to the state. It's the lottery that made the complaint that the city, when the city gets a complaint, they have to do something. The rangers and the police have been out here and they have said, we would like to see this place stand at least until the end of winter so people will have a safe place to be. But the lottery says, well, people were feeding them on the street, so let's get them out of here. Let's chase them out. Where are they going to go? They don't have a place to go. It's the thing. This is, this is good. If you go on the other side of that levee where the water rises, you could drown somebody. That's a real serious issue out here. This levee protects them from that. There's very few places like this on the river. These people that own these businesses back here have said they have no problem with this camp. These people are fine as far as they're concerned. This is the state lottery that's, that's putting this down. So this discharge back to the state. By the way, before they took over our education system, we were second in the country in education. Now we're second in the water. So thank you, lottery. <laughs> John, spell your first and last name, please. And first, well, John with an H and Prince, K. R A I N T Z. Got two more people here that would like to speak to you. Lola. Hi, I'm Lola Wiley. I've been out here on the river for the last year. I've been named out of the I was in the shelter when they closed the port. This situation has not really changed. The numbers are only for people. Yeah, they're making housing for the homeless. But most of it is for people who are disabled, drug or alcohol dependent. Or if there are capable people like me or my husband, all those other people, hundreds of us out there, we don't choose to be real. I never thought I would be a homeless person. So here I am. I can't get work. I'm applying for SSI for my disabilities. There's several of us. We don't qualify for programs. We don't qualify for the housing. We have nowhere else to go. I have a chance for a job in January, but there's things that hold us here. So until we can leave, this is what we have to do. Spell your first and last name. L O L A W I I. Thank you. I'm Dale Jones. I was born in the state of Michigan when I was seven years old. I got out at 18. What you see here is a social networking problem. Myself, a lot of my peers out here have a lack of social skills. Even though I'm blessed that I made it out of the system, one of the 6% is California Youth Authority, back when they revealed the Tracy uh, cagings and whatnot, in the B, it said they have an 85% failure rate. This is part of the cause of it. You see social networking going on and helping each other. 
I used to be in Safe Brown and I seen that camp turning every two months. People going into rehab, going into housing. So we have to have something. We've gone to the city several times. We made ideas, suggestions and whatnot. What have they given us back that we can do? We need to have ideas back that we are allowed to do. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, what you see here is uh, just a small portion of the total number of homeless people in Sacramento. Uh, and what you've heard through the Occupy movement is that it's not just homelessness in Sacramento that's a problem. It's unemployment, it's lack of housing, it's uh, lack of health care. All those uh, issues are being brought together. And I think you have Occupy Sacramento people out here saying this is one of their projects uh, to end, end homelessness, to get a proper uh, process by which uh, homeless people can be given some benefits and some opportunity to get to get up and get out for this for the city to come in here and wreck this camp uh, with no alternative is just criminal and what we're saying is that that's what we've been told is going to happen tomorrow and if that happens we call upon everybody in the city and the county to come out here and stand with these homeless folks and say to the city authorities this will not stand. If you have some ideas, let's talk about them. Let's work on them. But uh, to use police to end homelessness is crazy. Name and title, sir. Mark Barron, civil rights lawyer. Spell first and last, please. Mark, M-A-R-K, M-E-R-I-N. You know, Winter Sanctuary opened last night. It sure did, and it's a wonderful thing. But you know what? It only houses 50